Okay, welcome back to the History Channel. We're now focusing on the reign of Richard the Lionheart, Richard the uh, First. He was born in 1157, and he had his first army command at the age of 16. So he's a soldier from a very, very young age. He's involved with military exploits, which is also part of the problem of his reign as well. Now, not only was he king of England, he also, like his father, the, uh, with the Angevin Empire, is the Duke of Normandy, Aquitaine and Gascony. So, north and southwestern France, as you would know it now. He's also Lord of Cyprus, that's to do with the Crusade, that's an honorary title, and the Byzantine Empire and the Holy Roman Empire disagree with that, and that leads to him having a few sticky sticky days down the road. But he's also a Count of Poitiers, Anjou, Maine, Nantes. So, again, more of south-central western France, and he also was overlord of Brittany, so the, the Breton nobles see him as their overlord, and they have to pay homage to him, so that's Western France. So he controls north and western and northwest and southwestern France, basically. So half what we see France today is under his direct control. He lived most of his adult life in Aquitaine when he wasn't on campaign, and he only spent six months in England uh, as a monarch. Basically he got crowned and that was basically it. Um the Crusades come along, and of course Jerusalem has fallen to Salah Hadin, and he becomes a central Christian commander of the Third Crusade, partly because the French King Philip has to pull out, but partly, um, well, he's a soldier, really. So when he's on crusade, William de Longchamp is his regent of the kingdom. His mother is regent of his French lands, and William de Longchamp deals with, with England and the settlement of Ireland. Um, so William is in charge of raising taxes, uh, dispensing with the law, um, making laws in the king's name, um, and basically keeping the civil peace. And for the most part, he is successful in England. And he's a very crucial figure that we'll meet again, probably, with uh, Richard's brother, John. Now, whilst out on crusade, he's on the way back from the Holy Land in 1192. Uh, he, he's trying to get to lands controlled by Henry the Lion, who is a cousin and an ally in Europe, who's based in the Holy Roman Empire in Germany. Uh, the Holy Roman Empire right now is having its own form of civil strife because it's a very very large conglomerate of, of vassal states um, and he's captured by Leopold V, Duke of Austria, a vassal state of the High Roman Empire, an ally of Henry VI, the High Roman Emperor, uh, who's trying to keep this disparate empire, empire together and they dislike the fact that Richard the Lionheart and some of his relatives have supported Henry the Lion against them in years past with money, trade, men, weapons etc. He's held captive for two years and this is where the term King's Ransom comes from. Because of the Lord of Cyprus, he's already had issues getting home from the Holy Land with the Byzantine Emperor basically uh, making his life exceptionally difficult. So he has to go incognito, um, dressed as a Knights Templar, to avoid detection by the Byzantine forces in Greece. He's shipwrecked twice, so he has to do a lot of it by, by road, which is a very dangerous thing to do. Um, he's released in 1194 after uh, the, the, the English crown has to pay the Holy Roman Empire, £100,000 of silver. Basically, three three years' worth of what England earns. So what England would earn in a year in tax, three year, three tax years' worth. So the country is basically bankrupt, which is going to cause problems for his little brother, John, when he becomes king, which is why a lot of lands get lost. Because of his time away, uh, law and order in the in the in the Normandy, Aquitaine, Gascony, Poitiers, Anjou, Maine, Nantes. So his French lands is getting a little bit fractious, and there are re revolts and rebellions. And one of them, which is very very important, is the uh, revolt in the Limousine region, um, which is by Imar V of Limoges, uh, a, a noble. Uh, he's a local uh, duke. He's a local earl, or whatever you want to call it. Member of the nobility lo locally, and he's decided to revolt and um, challenge uh, Richard the Lionheart. And it claims Richard the Lionheart's life. At, at a siege, uh, he's hit by a crossbow bolt in the neck, and the wound festers and separates and goes moulding, he gets gangrene, and he dies of blood poisoning, as the story goes. So if you watch the uh, Russell Crowe Robin Hood film, you see that siege at the, at the beginning of the film, or a dramatised version of a similar way of how he dies. Um... Yes, yeah, so basically he's, he's he's a soldier, not an administrator. So he relies on loyal nobles such as William de Longchamp to run his kingdom for him while he's busy hacking and stabbing people. Uh, he has no children with his wife, so he is succeeded by his brother John. Yeah. 
And this is the beginning of the end of the uh, Angevin Empire. It is. Um, all these lands in France slowly get taken by the French crown or by French nobles away from uh, the reign or the control of the, uh, the English crown uh, over the next decades. And it's not just John, it happens progressively as well after John as well for a few more kings until uh, Edward III comes to the throne about a century later. So there is a decline of the power of, of the English crown for about a century. And it starts here, with, which is the Lionheart. He is also one of the few uh, kings in history to be known by his nickname rather than by what number he is in the order of succession. He's more known by his nickname, the Lionheart, than by his regal number, which is the first, because there's two other kings called Richard who have come after him. That's very interesting. And also, his cousin Henry the Lion is also known by his nickname rather than his regal number as well. So, it must run in the Plantagenet, Plantagenet family. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. It's a brief little video on the reign of Richard the Lionheart. It's only ten years, and he only spent six months in England, so it's not really a reign, it's just chaos. And this happens a lot with the Plantagenets. A lot of chaos. A lot of revolts, lots of rebellions, lots of civil wars, and lots of bloodshed. So this is not the last we've heard of um, the Plantagenet family. There's going to be more to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Place your comments below, and I'll have some more videos for you soon.